wonder. We started this uh, Advent series a couple of weeks ago that we're calling This Changes Everything. We're taking a look at some aspects of Christmas that changed the world. Uh, two weeks ago, we uh, talked about peace. Peace that comes not from our circumstances, but peace that comes from being rooted, from being grounded, from being in, in Christ, the one who is the Prince of Peace. Today, we're, we're talking about wonder. Let me set the scene. We have these shepherds. They're out on the hillside and they're tending the sheep like shepherds do. And, and suddenly the angel Gabriel shows up and announces to them the Messiah is being born. He's in Bethlehem and they're to go find him. And they'll know it's him when they see a baby in a stable lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then we read the story, the account in, in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 17. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. They're filled with amazement, which is another word for wonder, and they spread that amazement. A number of child psychiatrists argue that the first emotion that people experience when they come into this world is wonder, amazement. It's a surprise to exist. It's, it's kind of strange when you think about it. It's not necessarily wonder about any particular thing. They're not trying to figure out necessarily how something works. They're just amazed by everything. They're experiencing it for the first time. You can see it in their eyes. It's, it's a look of amazement. Whoa, I exist. Here's life. It's so expressive. And they begin to respond to voices. And their earliest gestures, their earliest sounds are all about, wow, look at that. The, the, the color, the, the sound, the taste, the, the smell, it, it, it's all fresh. It's all new. Their, their brain is, is just amazed. And children that are raised in healthy environments, they, they keep a sense of that wonder and amazement. Especially at Christmas time, we often think back to early memories those first Christmases in our lives. And maybe you have a magical moment, a moment frozen in time, or maybe you don't. But when we grow up, we slowly or sometimes quickly lose that sense of wonder. We lose the magic. We lose it towards life, and we lose it towards Christmas. We lose those fresh eyes to see wonder. We lose that fresh heart to experience it. And everything begins to feel like a been there, done that, same old, same old. But we try to preserve the wonder for, for our kids and for our grandkids. We, we want them to experience it at Christmas. We, we get excited and we, we ooh and ah and say, isn't that awesome? Isn't that great? We open the presents and, wow, it's amazing. But we're, we're really cynics, aren't we? We're, we're, we're faking it. We, we just want them to be excited. We, we bought it for them. It's, it's no big surprise to us. But it shows you that we value this. We know that it's important. We try to keep it with our kids as long as possible. The truth is, we often tend to get bored with life. It begins to be a chore. Christmas begins to be a chore. We lose some of the wonder and the amazement. Uh, we stop being curious about things. We stop really looking at things. It takes a lot to impress us, to really surprise us. Uh, I've, I've read that aside from some genetic disease, diseases like Alzheimer's and other kinds of dementia, aside from that, the main reason the brain atrophies and decays is because we stop using it. We're no longer curious. We no longer think about things. We're, we're not stimulated by things. Our brain kind of falls asleep and we begin to die. Babies, when, when, when they're new, everything's new. Uh, their brain is creating all these new neural connections. But when we stop being amazed and stop being impressed and stop being surprised, stop being curious and celebrating, our brain begins to decay. A healthy brain is one that stays curious and inquires and is fascinated by things. And we notice the wonder. But sometimes it gets to the point where, where even peak experiences begin to feel kind of like been there, done that, even though you've never been there and you've never done that. I think for a lot of people, our, our peak experiences tend to be a little bit anticlimactic. You know, the, the bucket list stuff. Someday you're going to go there. And when you finally go there, it's like, you know, that really wasn't all that extra special. Everything begins to feel like been there, done that. And we feel this kind of 
loss. We, we want to experience wonder and amazement again, but we seem incapable of it. We long for it. We, we have this longing for something that's truly amazing and, and truly wonderful. There's a German word for this, Zinsucht. It's this yearning, this, this craving, this, this missing of something. It, it, it's much more than nostalgia. It's this indefinite kind of yearning that we can't clearly identify. Zensukt is a, is, is a longing for someplace else. It's like a longing for a loved one that you miss, even though you've never met them. It's a, a bittersweet, nostalgic feeling. It's almost like you remember it, even though you've never experienced it. It's this longing, this sense that if only I can cross over to that other side, get to that distant country, find a home, find a loved one, it would be perpetually amazing. It would be perpetual wonder. It's a, it's a completeness that we presently lack and we yearn, we long for that completeness. It can get triggered by a, a whole number of different things. Uh, you know, the way the moonlight reflects on the snow. Those perfect Christmas Eves when the big gentle snowflakes fall. Like the one we want for this year as we meet outside. It's, it's watching a wonderful life once again. It's the smell of, of eggnog coffee, one of our must-have family traditions in the Bells household. It's that sound of a gentle breeze blowing through the trees. Uh, hearing Handel's Messiah. It invokes this zensuk, this yearning. Some psychiatrists try to explain it as a like longing for an innocent time when things were wonderful and things felt amazing. And there's some truth to that. But the thing we long for goes way beyond that. C.S. Lewis was an Oxford professor of uh, mythology. Uh, Lewis was an atheist. He wrote a lot and was fascinated by this yearning, by this zensuk. And Lewis describes Zinsukt as the inconsolable longing in the heart for we know not what. A yearning for a far familiar, non earthy land one can identify as one's home. He believed that all the great stories, what he called the fantasy stories, whether it's of mythology or world history, were birthed out of the same Zinsukt. We have this yearning for we're not sure what. And, and, and so we, we look for this in the stories that express the yearning of the human heart. Around the age of 30, uh, C.S. Lewis became a believer. And part of the reason, it wasn't the only reason, but a large part of the reason was because of this phenomenon of Zensukt. Uh, C.S. Lewis wondered about this. He says, how is it that human beings yearn for something that the world cannot offer? Why are we dissatisfied with this world? We have, on some level, an idea about a better world, and we have a, a longing to live there in a more complete world, and it makes us dissatisfied with this world. Why is that? If we're just products of nature, how can it be that we yearn for something that nature doesn't provide? You know, Lewis noticed that uh, nature always creates creatures who have yearnings for what nature itself can provide. And so as animals, they get hungry. And animals, they can get food. They, they, they can breathe in this air. and We get thirsty for water. Nature always produces beings that yearn for what nature could provide for. And Lewis would argue that it's bizarre for nature to evolve an animal that longs for something that never existed. So if human beings are simply the product of nature, time, chance, evolution, however, however you want to define the thing, if we're just products of nature, then how is it that we can have at the core of our being a yearning for something that nature doesn't provide? And so Lewis came to this conclusion that Zensukt has to point to something real. There must be some reality that corresponds to the yearning in our heart. And what he found, what he came to believe, is that the Bible explains this. We, we yearn for more because we're meant for more. The Bible tells us that this world, in its present condition, is not the world that God had intended. It tells us that we're a, a race of fallen, lost people. We're estranged. We're cut off from our Creator. We're estranged from our, our natural home. And that's what the whole story of Genesis is all about. And on some level, whether we know it or not, whether we can put it into words or not, every human being longs to get reconnected, to be reconnected to our Maker. To be back home. And so we, we often feel like aliens in this world. We can feel out of place here. There's, there's something off. There's something incomplete. Something that was supposed to be here, but it's not here now. There's something that, that would be wonderful and amazing if we could just get in touch with it. But right now, we feel estranged from it. We, we get a glimpse of it in childhood when everything's new. But since then, we've lost it. 
And so C.S. Lewis thought that the Zinsukt was like a, like a homing device that God put in us. It's meant to drive us in a direction. It's meant to, to point us like a, like a spiritual compass to true north. And so C.S. Lewis came to understand that true north, that yearning is directed ultimately towards that little baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swathing clothes, the one that the shepherds came upon. You see, Jesus is the amazement that we're looking for. Jesus is the wonder we're looking for, that we long for. And Lewis came to understand that we long to be one with our Creator, and that's what Jesus brought to us. We long to be loved with a perfect love that never grows old. We're, we're created for that. And this is what Jesus came to bring. We long to be reconnected to the one who is the, the source of all existence, the one who is the source of all that's good, the source of all light and all beauty, the source of all truth and all amazement, the source of all wonder. We yearn to be connected with him. And that's what Jesus brings into this world. Jesus is the wonder of God brought to earth. Eugene Peterson, in his reflection entitled God With Us, wrote, Wonder is the only adequate launching pad for exploring this fullness, this wholeness of human life. Wonder keeps us open-eyed, expectant, alive to life that's always more than we can account for, that always exceeds our calculations, that's always beyond anything we can make. Wonder. He's a wonderful God. He's bringing his wonder into this world. He's the amazing God, bringing his amazement into this world. We can be amazed by the God whose beauty is reflected in the wonder of a child. And this is what Jesus brings us. He, he opens our eyes to the truth of what we long for. Jesus himself is the wonderful God. And so this Advent season, this, this season of waiting, this season of preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus is about so much more than decorations and lights and Christmas baking and parties and Christmas music. That's all good stuff. But let's not lose the wonder. In the midst of COVID-19 restrictions, we mourn and we grieve. We mourn and grieve over those gatherings that we can't do this year. And that's healthy. That's appropriate. That's good to do that. But let's not lose the wonder. Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, set aside all the glories of heaven and was born in a manger. He was born in a world full of strife and of conflict and poverty. He was born under a, a politically repressive regime. He became a refugee. And wonder of wonders, he came to be with us. He came bringing his world into this world. And he can make all things fresh. He makes all things new when we allow him. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. He's talking about how we look at, how we experience the world. Behold, the new creation is a new way. There's a new way of looking at the world. And when we have fresh eyes and a fresh heart, we begin to see the wonder of things. We begin to see afresh the wonder of Jesus. There are many times in the Gospels where we read that people were amazed at Jesus. Everywhere he went, he amazed people, and they were filled with wonder. His teachings amazed people. His authority amazed people. His miracles amazed people. Think about it. The God who spoke everything into existence, who spoke the trillions of galaxies into existence, who holds every molecule in existence, that God, the creator God, the one who has no beginning and no end, the one who is the king of all kings and lord of all lords. He became a little baby, wrapped in swathing clothes and put in a little manger, this vulnerable little baby, and he did that out of love for us. He gave his life for us to free us from the one who's been oppressing us and holding us captive. If that's not surprising, if that's not wonderful, then nothing is. This, this is the heart of what Christmas is all about. Jesus is the answer to our, our zinsukt. Jesus is the wonder that we're longing for. Jesus is the home that we've been missing. He is the loved one that we feel estranged from. I think C.S. Lewis was right when he talked about Zen Sukt as a homing device, as being our spiritual compass pointing us to true north. I want to encourage us to take time as a regular spiritual discipline to look true north, to explore the wonder. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that the invariable mark of wisdom is to see the miraculous in the common. Or William Blake put it this way, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. 
we get so used to the Christmas story. And this year, we get I think we get so caught up in the loss of what we can't do because of COVID-19 restrictions that we no longer see the, the mystery, the miracle, the wonder. It seems so common, and yet it's absolutely astounding that God is holding us in existence. And to be able to grasp even a little bit of that miraculous dimension is to be in awe. Don't take life for granted. Stay alert to the presence of God. Notice what he's doing. Look with the amazement of a child. We long for more because we're created for more, because we're created for God. And ultimately, it's about gazing on the beauty of the one whose love is amazing, whose love never grows old and never tires and will never fade. He is the source of all that is good and beautiful and lovely and true and we are made for that. This week, this Advent season, can we have our eyes wide open, our hearts wide open, our minds wide open to see the beauty of an amazing God, to see all around us the beauty of the Christmas story? Can we enter into that? To enter into these next three weeks wide open amazed that God loves you because of Jesus. And you can be a new person in Christ because of that. And because of that, you can experience his peace and his joy, his presence, his love, and his hope. And I pray that as we move into this next week, we would do so with a longing and a commitment to keep our eyes open to wonder. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching this. And I pray, Lord, that for every one of us, that you open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word. I pray that you would help us to set aside any calluses that have developed on our emotions or cataracts on our eyes or deafness that's happened to our ears, hardness that's maybe happened in our hearts, anything that prevents us from entering into the amazement and the wonder of who you are and what you've done for us, of what you began to do on Christmas morning. Open our eyes to experience, as for the first time, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.